Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about why programming is hard. And honestly, it's been hard trying to make this video. This is like my third cut and I just keep blabbing. Because I could talk all day about why programming is hard and you're not really going to understand it. A lot of the beginners out there. Really what I want to try to focus on here is actually like confidence. Because a lot of beginner programmers, they think that they're never going to learn something because they struggle with learning it. But the fact of the matter is, dude, we all do that crap. We've all been there. And the ones that or even in the senior role, like I have a senior engineering role, I still struggle with stuff. So like if I'm having to learn something new, I'm actually dealing with the same ropes and challenges that you guys are. Now, it might not be how like hash arrays work or how I should use a dictionary to my advantage or like how to iterate a Python list or like even just thinking in object-oriented programming concepts. Those things are something that you're definitely going to struggle with when you're getting started because your brain doesn't think that way. Like no, nobody's brain thinks that way. In fact, Douglas Crockford, he's considered one of the best JavaScript programmers of all time. He actually wrote the JSON data transfer, uh, JSON data object. So like he, he, he just basically come, came up with that. So he, he, or at least he's, he's credited for that, but he wrote one of the best JavaScript books out there as well. But what are the, like, he, he once said, like, this famous quote, I, I, and I would really just paraphrase because I don't remember the exact quote, but it has something to do with the fact that only people that have something wrong with them would be software engineers because only software engineers or software developers, computer programmers, whatever you want to call them, would spend the insane amount of time necessary to stare at a computer screen until things started to make sense. Like, it takes a certain type of person to do that, and it doesn't mean that you have to be a genius. But it does mean you're going to have to put in some serious effort. I don't know that there's any programmer out there that hasn't put in like serious, serious effort when it came to learning how to program. There are certain people that seem to have math fundamentals and, you know, like the Google type of programmer that will make people do all these coding challenges and riddles and learn all about data complexity and things like that. The, you know, they're looking for a certain type of person because they're also solving problems that most companies don't have. So for the vast majority of programmers out there, they're not having to deal with complex algorithms. It's about how to assemble a bunch of pieces of the puzzle together and try to get it working as quickly as you possibly can, how to decipher business requirements, how to communicate with people. It takes like a whole wide array of skills to be an effective software developer. So that said, that doesn't mean that the people that are able to acquire those skills and be able to do them day to day, that they didn't struggle when they were first getting started. Like we all did. I don't know of anybody that can just jump into this field and all of a sudden just think, oh, it's a for loop. And uh, that, that makes perfect sense to me that this thing just, you know, loops over some shit. It seems like a very basic concept, but like when I was first getting started, some of my basic programs, I, I wrote a lot of scraping, scripting stuff uh, in Perl and Python. But I remember some of my first programs though were just console apps where it would just ask you something and then you put in something and then I would just do a bunch of if else's. So it's like, if he said his name was Chris, say, hey, fuck you. You know, I would do certain things like that just to try to get it working. And I got a lot of satisfaction out of it, but I couldn't see the bigger picture. I didn't see how you get from basic, you know, syntax of a programming language to how you build web servers and how do you build websites. How does Python code build web servers and websites and how does it do machine learning and data science and all this shit? And the answer to that is it does so through uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. So they, they say the same thing in physics, man. Programming is very physics based. It's very math based. A lot of what we do is based on a linear progression that got us here, right? The problem with the linear progression that gets us to where we are currently is that our learning is not ever linear. Like we end up watching a YouTube video and say, oh, Chris Hawk suggested this or some other dude suggested that. Now I got to like start learning that shit. My biggest project was a rock music website. It's what got me to be a programmer thanks to a band called Bayside. And like quickly I found out I need to learn HTML. I need to learn CSS. I need to learn JavaScript. I need to learn jQuery. I need to learn about a database. I need to learn how to text scrape and how to use regular expressions. And I need to learn about file systems and how to iterate an entire directory of different flat files. Like my databases even today are still flat file based for a lot of prototypical work that I'm doing, but it's through this trial and error of trying to actually build something. So if you go back to like the original videos I've done on my channel is, is I've always said you got to build stuff in order to be the best programmer you can be, but you're going to run into some brick walls all the time. 
And one of the things that I think makes programming so difficult is that people try to compare themselves to others. So they're like, this dude says, you know, programming is easy and I should be able to know this. And then they start doubting themselves when really they shouldn't listen to that person at all. Like another thing that I've always done on my tutorials is I never try to say, oh, it's as easy as pie. It's easy peasy or whatever. I, I, I hate those expressions because I know nothing is easy when you're first learning it, right? There's so many senior developers out there that are like, oh, it's easy. You just got to follow X, Y, Z. You can, like people don't naturally know that stuff, right? And that is the type of difficulty that we end up running up against all the time. So we don't know how to solve a problem. And until we actually learn how to solve the problem, we just simply don't know. So it's a very linear pr process of, of saying, hey, you know, I know this, this, and this. But you're never going to truly grasp that until you understand why this, this, and this is the way it is. And, and, and all that just simply takes time. The Dunning-Kruger effect is like very prevalent in this industry. You're going to have all kinds of people that tell you something is easy. And really, in most cases, it's the senior devs that I see now that are like, you know what? No. In fact, I remember one time I was like talking to this architect who had an art degree, right? He's one of the best programmers I've ever worked with. And uh, he had an art degree and he was just like, oh, I can understand how you'd be so confused. He's like, because look at all this crap, you know, if else, if else, do this, do this, call this function, call this function, pass this function to that as a callback. Like, of course that shit is complicated. Who's going to know that stuff very well? It takes experience. It takes just simply practice. I mean, you can't, you can't shortchange it. You're going to have to practice. And another thing that actually comes in the way with practicing, I've found not only just with my own career, but other people out there is that because technology moves so quickly, there's this like pressure of almost like a deadline. Oh, some new framework came out, some new feature of react came out. Now I got to have an app that incorporates that. Otherwise I'm going to like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to keep up with everybody else out there. Like I think there's always this struggle of people like that think that they have to learn the latest of everything in order to keep up. And all that really does is, is just keep us, it keeps us held in check, really. So yeah, I mean, the, the bottom line is that computers are dumb. They are dumb objects. Programming itself is just simply ones and zeros at its basic core. Programming languages like C are very, very powerful, but they're very low level to the point where, I mean, I know people argue it's a high level language, but I mean, when we're comparing it to Python, Java, C Sharp, something like that, C seems like a very, very, you know, easy language to learn. But I remember a, a quote from Dennis Ritchie who said, and he was basically talking about Unix and, and C, and he was just like, you know, C and Unix are, are very easy to learn, but it takes a genius to be able to use them. And he's probably right because most of us these days, we're working with higher level languages, which goes back to the point that I was, I was saying that like we're standing on the shoulders of giants. And a lot of these languages, libraries that are out there, they were built with a specific mindset. They were built with a specific purpose to solve, but we're never solving the same problem. So most of the complexity seems to be, how do I take this and get it to do this, right? And the documentation might give you some sort of vague kind of update, like, oh, you can do this or do that. But a lot of times it's like buried and like, you just simply don't know because even if you saw it, you wouldn't recognize it. So how does that actually go away? That goes away through time and through trial and effort. And going back to my original point here, when I first started just uh, getting on this, uh, this tangent, is that I couldn't step away when I couldn't solve something. I would end up getting frustrated. I would, I would swear, cuss, and I would, I would like, so, and sometimes when I did take a break, I was just so pissed off that I had to like, you know, just step away for a few moments because I just couldn't figure it out. So that actually translated even into my sleep. I mean, I would wake up in the middle of the night and, and be like, oh, I could solve it this way. But a lot of the times, like when you're, when you're, your brain can only take so much information in. And one of the things that makes programming so difficult is that we can't shortchange it. Like we can't speed, speed up our, our learning progression, especially if we're not actually building stuff and using our own mind to build it. You're going to run into problems where your brain simply will shut off to the point where you're not going to be learning. Like people, I really think it's important that when you're first getting started programming and even like when you're an advanced programmer, you have to take breaks. You have to know that, okay, 
I'm really struggling or, or like if, if like for me now, when I, when I know that I need to take a break, it's because I didn't see something obvious. And what's so funny about this field is like, that is not something, I mean, people could be like, oh, Chris is just an idiot. People could think that, right? But I've worked with some very smart people, people that were smarter than me, who came to me with problems that they couldn't solve saying, hey, Chris, I need another pair of eyes, man. It's like 3.30 on a Friday. I'm trying to go home. I don't know what the fuck is going on right now. That's normal. That's a guy who needs to take a break, but he gets paid as a software engineer and he's up against a deadline and it always helps to get another pair of eyes on the problem. So, so that is something that actually takes time to learn. Like when do I need to shut off? When should I take a break? How much time should I spend each night trying to do this stuff? And I think everybody, your mileage is going to vary depending on how busy your schedule is, but learning when to take a break and knowing that this stuff is difficult, it's hard and like, it's always going to be that way. The better you can treat yourself by giving yourself breaks, make sure you're eating healthy, you know, exercising, spending time with friends and family, doing things besides coding, because I think your time is better served when you run up against that mental block that typically happens once a day at, at some particular time. You're not going to absorb as much information as you could if you just simply take a break and come back. And if you're really trying to get a project out the door, maybe you need to take a break from the coding aspect of it uh, or coding one specific solution of it and work on something else. Because programming is never like cut and dry. Like it, it, even if I'm like, so for instance, I'm building a website right now where I'm doing a lot of graphing and charting out data and stuff like that. And I'm not overly familiar with it. So sometimes I can get rolling where I'm spending like two, three hours and I'm just like making a bunch of progress. And then I want to try to do something, you know, a little bit different and something I, I haven't done before. And it was a problem that just kind of came up or like maybe I had to restructure the data or something like that. Or sometimes you're writing out a code, a solution to a problem and you realize, oh, I didn't incorporate all the different possible scenarios and you end up having to do a bunch of rework. And usually when I think, okay, do I have to do a bunch of rework at this moment? That's when I take a break because I never want to jump into a rework situation if I haven't taken a break. Because in many cases, there's some other like clever alternative that you can come up with to say, you know what, I'm kind of fucked it up here. Let me put it to do, but I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to work around that for right now. And you'd be surprised because honestly, most software is like that. I mean, it's all these like edge cases and it's, uh, I mean, that's programming, dude. That's, that is programming. So if there's any point to this video, it's simply that you shouldn't give up. You shouldn't look at others and, and try to compare yourself to them. You shouldn't look to, at people that say that something is easy when it, like, it, it is absolutely a fact that it's not. And I would just say that, like, not, um, I would just say, listen to yourself, you know, listen to, to your body when you feel in your mind, when you feel like you need a break. Uh, if you feel like, you know, this negative n negativity starting to creep in, I can't do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. This, that, and the other thing, take a break, take a break, come back at it.